In this video, we will be continuing on the beginner's guide to SDL2 in the Go language. So if you're just starting out with this video, you want to go to github.com programming rainbow beginner's guide to SDL2 in Go, and you want to clone that repository. Since this is the fourth video, you want to grab the source code from the, the third video folder right here, the main.go, and you want to copy that into the top level directory. So let's show where we left off with in the last video. So we have the window open. It's 800 by 600. It has got a black background. Uh, the, the render is a black background. And then we have a background image that is the SDL uh, logo. It also has a title set up. So in this video, we will be setting the, the color, uh, the render color. So we'll be able to change that color. And we might get to setting the, the window icon as well. So the first thing, let's just look at how we change the color of the render. The render has a method on it co called set draw color. It, it's, it's just a method of the render and it, it has an R, a G, a B, an alpha, and they're all uints eights. So that means they're one byte, eight bit integers. They're all um, positive. There's no negative numbers there. And it returns an error. Now, I'm not going to check the error in this one because it's going to happen in the game loop. And it's not that important if the the color doesn't change perfectly. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to ignore the error on this one. But let's just set a color and see how that goes. And I, I'm going to I'm going to make an, a new method for this one. Okay, under load media, go down there. Right there is load media. Yep. So we're going to have a method here, and we're just going to call it change color. And we're not uh, returning an error from this method or anything like that. Sorry, I'm going to call it rand color. It, it'll make sense in a minute. So we have that method called set draw color, yeah, on the render. So we got G render. Then we have set draw uh, color. There. So this is taking in an R, G, B, and A. So we have a red channel, green channel, blue channel, and an alpha channel. So the alpha channel is transparency. We do not do not need our render to be transparent. If we change the color, but then make it transparent, we don't actually see that color. So this isn't going to be transparent. And since this is one byte, it's a uint eight, which is an eight bit unsigned integer. The the counting goes from zero to two fifty five. So on this one, zero would be completely transparent, and two fifty five would be completely. Um, opaque. And that's the one that we want. For the alpha, we're going to be strictly set to 255. Okay. Now on these, these other three, we can sh mix and match these colors. So if we put 000, we have black. If we put 255, 255, 255, we have white. If we go 255, we're going to have the brightest color red we can have. Um, 00, 255 will be the brightest blue. So why don't we just go with like a dark blue color? You can just set this to zero. Zero. And we'll put this at like 64. That, that's about 25% of the way up of the color for blue. And we'll get a uh, kind of a darker, darker blue color. Okay, so we have this method, but we're not calling it anywhere. So what I want to do is I want to call this method if I press the space bar. So we're already checking key key events here and, and the key key down. So all we need to do is add a different check here on our case for a space. So I'm going to say scan code and space. So if space is pressed, we can just call our, our member function, which is rand color. It's not very random right now, but 
we'll make it random. So now if I press the space bar, I should get a darker blue color. Maybe it wasn't a good idea since this is already a dark blue, but yeah. Okay, that seemed to work. Now if I keep pressing space, nothing happens because it's just statically setting it to dark blue. It's not doing anything amazing with it. So let's talk about how to come up with random numbers so that we can get random colors. So Go has um, the random math.random as part of the standard library. Well, we can use that and we can use it to make this kind of random object. But to, to create this random object, a new random object, we need a source. So what's this source? Well, that's another function from math.random. And this source needs a seed number that is a 64-bit integer. Okay. So where can we get a 64-bit integer? Well, if we use another standard library package, say time, and we get the time now, we get, we get a type time, but we want a 64-bit integer. So if we run a method on that time now, which is the um, Unix nano, we're going to get a 64-bit integer. And this is nanoseconds since 1970. So we're using we're, whatever this, when, the, when this program runs, whatever the nanoseconds are since 1970, you know, at the time that you launch the program, that is going to be the seed for a random number generator that gives us pseudo-random numbers. They're not cryptographically, you know, secure, but they're just fine for games. So it's going to seed our random number generator. So we'll have this random object finally, and we can use that to call this method on it that will give us a random integer that will give us from zero to whatever this number that we choose to put in here. And it's going to give us an int back. So I know that's a bit complicated. I just kind of want to explain the whole sequence. So basically we need two new standard library things. We need math, uh, math random and we need time. So we're going to need to add those. And these are part of the standard library. Math rand and time. And we're going to we're going to need to hold on to our um random uh, I'm going to call it RNG for like random number generator. So RNG and this is going to be a pointer to rand dot rand. That's the type. It's it's in the math dot rand. It's a rand package for from math, and the type is rand with a capital R. So when we were over here, where is it? So that this rand right here, this pointer to a rand. That's that's the type that we're doing. But remember, it's in math rand. So that's that. Okay, so we need to, um, we, we've declared it, but now in, uh, now since this is part of the game struct, it can't happen in SDL initialize because that has no access to the game struct. It needs to be in the, the initialize method for game. So we have this, um, the RNG that we've already created, and we want to populate this. So it's going to be G R N G equals. We have rand the the first the first function we looked at new it was the very first one we looked at rand new. And remember, we need the source. We need to pass a source in here, and new source is what gives us the source. But this new source needs a seed number. Okay, so let's just work down the line of this. This needs um the a source passed into it. And we can say, is it ran new source? Yeah. New source, but this in turn needs something passed into it. Okay, which is where we get it, we get it from the time. So now we can say time dot now. But we need this time to be not a, of type T, we need it of a uh, type uh, 64 uh, in 64 bit int. 
So what we did is we called the method on this. So we're just creating this object and calling the method on it right away. And this this un, unix nano. So we'll go show it again real quick. So we have this time, time now. That gives us the time, and it's of type time. And we can take that, we can run a method on that, which is unix nano, which gives us our 64-bit int. There's the time now, and then we're running a method on that to get our 64-bit int. That 64-bit int is seeding this new source, which is what we needed to be passed in, that that new source is what we needed passed in to rand new. And that's finally going to give us our RNG, which is of type um, pointer to rand. Okay, I know that's quite long-winded. That's the type that we're finally getting back. And that's going to set up our, our random number generator so we can actually get random numbers. I think this is nano. So now that we have this random number generator set up, um, what we're going to do is use the method on it, so it would be rng dot, and this is int n. I, I'm not quite sure what this stands for, but it gives us a number going from zero, I guess the n stands for the number that we're going to put in, going from zero up to the number that we put in. But I believe it is um, exclusive, as in it doesn't include the number that we put in. So if we put in um, 256, we'll get a number from zero to 255 as our random number. And that's important. And remember, this returns an int, okay? But this, where is it? Um, this guy right here, if we look at its signature, it needs uint eights. So an int is, um, I'm not sure in Go if it's 32-bit or 64-bit. It might be 64-bit. But that, that's, a, that's a signed integer, but we need an unsigned 8-bit. So we, we need to deal with that as well. So let's try this with the, the blue color. So we have our random number generator, that'd be g.rng, and we need to call a method, that the int n, and that needs a number passed into it. And remember, it's exclusive, so it's 256, because we need a number from 0 to 255. But the number it's returning is, a, is an int. It's not a uint8. So we need a uint8. So we can say u int eight, so we'll just cast this, okay? So that should give us what we want. And now we should randomly getting different shades of blue if we do this, okay? That looks good. So let's just do this for all of them. I'm just gonna copy this right here. Yank that and we'll put it in for the red and the green. And I'll just do a line break. You know, I'll just break this line down here. Right there. I don't think that zero is supposed to be there. Um, there's a zero here too. Okay. So now I should be getting random colors, but the transparency is never random. It's set to 255. So all of these are going to be randomly between zero and 255. And let's make sure we look at what colors, because we, we hope that we seeded the random number generator correctly so that we don't get the same sequence. So I'm going to look at the colors we get. Okay, um, so that's a, that's a light blue and a light purple and kind of a brown maroon. Okay, that's pink, another pink, and a green. Yeah, those are different colors. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Every time I press the space bar, I get a different random color. And it looks like the seating is working perfectly. So that is us. That's how you get random numbers, and that's how you would set, change the color. Um, and that's how you use the space bar to do it and everything else. So why don't we now set up a loading of a an icon for the... If you're in a floating window manager, like um, Windows or 
plasma, KD plasma, or GNOME, you 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 probably have an icon for whatever program you're running. So that that window icon, we can load that. So I didn't set up the page for it. So that would be in SDL. Set window icon. Okay, it's just set icon and it's a method of window. Okay, so we need a surface here. So we're going to be using, remember we used the load um, texture. Um, now we can just use the load. So on the, the image package, let me go over here to image. So in this package, we have just a load. And this is just going to load a surface instead of a, yeah, here we go. So this function loads a surface, it returns a, sur a pointer to a surface and an error. And so I know I said we load things as textures for the render, but this is not meant to be for the render. This is meant to be for the application icon, the window icon. And that has nothing to do with render. That is actually passing it off to something totally different. And it just uses a surface. So in this case, we need a surface. So we're just going to load the image, the same PNG, or not the same, but a different PNG image as a surface. And then we're going to use that surface to, where did it go? To set the window icon right here. Yeah, set icon. Okay. And this one just, this doesn't even return an error. It just, it's a method for of window and it just takes in the surface and it, and it sets it. And it doesn't even check for error. The other one does though. The, th this one does. And since I'm only using this surface temporarily, I'm not even going to save this in the game struct. So I'm going to actually do this in um, the SDL, uh, initialize SDL, because this is something that's just bringing SDL online. It has nothing to do with the actual game struct. So this is all going to happen in, let's see here, not load media. Initialize SDL right here. This is where I'm going to do it. I cannot do it here actually because I need the window pointer and the window pointer is a part of the game struct. So I am going to do it in the initialize here, but I'm, I'm not loading it. I'm not doing it in the load media because I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm not, I'm not just going to use this image one time as a surface and get rid of it right away. So right here above the RNG, or it doesn't matter where we put it, we can put it below the RNG. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a local variable icon surf and we're checking the error and I saw so I'm not this isn't in the um, the game struct because this surface is going to be a very temporary uh, it's, it's just going to be as long as this method call is and then it's going to go out of scope and I'm going to clean it up immediately so I'm using the image and just load, not load texture this time. So I don't need to send in the render. I just need the location of the image, which is over here. Oops. So in images, we have this go logo.png, and that's the one I want to use. And it's capital G on the go. Okay, so we have that, and then I'm gonna check, I'm gonna check this right away if it's an error. And this is just gonna return, I'll say error loading surface. But that should be all fine. And then if it did get loaded, I'm going to defer bring the surface. So a surface, where do I have it here? So if I open this up, hopefully it lets me. So a surface has a, the way you, you don't destroy a surface, you free a surface. Here it is. So this is the, this is how you release the memory allocated to a surface. You just free it. 
So it's a, it's a member here in Go of the surface. So it's surface.free. It just frees the surface. So I'm going to defer that. Okay. Now I actually want to use this. And I'm going to say, gee, it's a method of window. And it's that set icon. And this needs a surface, which is the icon surface. And, and it doesn't provide an error, the, the setting the window icon. Okay. Okay. What did I did? Did I put, I, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't think, I, yeah, I, I don't think I can do it this way. Watch this. It's not going to let me. Yeah, it doesn't like this at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split this out into its own line right there. If and that should be fine, because I, because I'm declaring this this isn't doesn't exist. It wasn't in the yeah. You know, it's it's being declared here, and I can't declare it in an if statement. The other ones they already exist. They're already been declared in the game struct. That's fine. Okay, so um, I, I'm returning this in the error. That's fine. I'm checking the error. I'm deferring the free. I always want to make sure that you're dealing with your freeing first right away. This is a local thing. I could also set this to nil, but this is going out of scope the second that this method ends. This, um, this is being freed while, while it's going out of scope. So there is no dangling pointer happening with this one. Um, I'm using it right away in this this function or this method for, of window, but it uh, does not this does not have an error associated with it. Okay, so let's just check to see if this is working. Okay, you can't see the icon, but let's just um, see if we say didn't load the image correctly. So I misspelled it. And now we have the error loading surface. That's the message I created. This is the message that's being returned by SDL. Couldn't open image. This is what would be returned by SDL get error if we were in C or C++ because we spelled the name wrong. That's fine. So I'm going to fix that. Okay, so we can, we can change this to changing colors and um, icon. Okay, and that is set up there. Changing colors and icon. Okay, so let's see what the icon looks like. Oops, why did I just do that? I don't know. Okay, so to show this icon, I'm going to start up a nested X window session that is going to load up KD Plasma. Um, I'm just going to start it over here in a different, yeah, I'll just do it over here. So uh, I'm going to use, what is it called, Zephyr or something like that? Okay, it's KDE, KDE Plasma 6, and we're still in the same, this isn't a VM or anything, so I'm, or a container or anything, I'm still in the exact same system, everything, I'm just going to open up Alacrity, which is the terminal I was already using, I'm going to go inside the folder that I was already working in, um, so I can, I can run it from here, I just want to show you Alacrity, we have this icon right here for Alacrity, and down here we have the icon here, if we hover over it, we see it bigger, that's what we're going to be checking for right here. We should see a gopher icon that we loaded. So here we go, go, yeah. And there is our gopher right there. And down here, there's our gopher. So it worked. We did load a gopher icon. And if we press space bar, all that good stuff works. That's all great. Okay. So yeah. So that's KD Plasma 6 if you wanted to see. It's a bit new now. So that's uh, that's going to be it for this one. Um, let me just walk through what we did. We we did add in a couple math rand and time from the standard library. We we did we have an RNG variable that's of type rand. And down in initialize, we are initializing this new random object with 
using new source, and that new source is being seeded with time now Unix Nano, which is giving us our 64-bit int, I believe. Um, that is seeding the new source, which is the new source is our you know created for our random that gives us our random number generator. So we're using that random number generator to make random colors in our set draw color. So we're we're put it on the the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, and we're just calling it as um it's you know it's it's in game so game RNG, and then we're using the int n and two fifty six for each of them. But we're casting that to a uint eight, so we get an unsigned eight bit integer because that is what set draw color is looking for. So that is in a, the game method uh, rand color, and that is being called down here when we press the space bar. We get an um, rand color, and then we loaded up the texture. Or sorry, the surface. We we just used a temporary variable here because that we don't need it for the game, but we're loading the the logo as a surface, making sure it didn't error, deferring it's free, because it, it is a C managed thing, you know, so we do need to make sure we clean up after ourselves. And then we're using it in the, the method for window set icon, we're passing in that icon serve pointer. And we've seen the gopher, what it looks like here. Oops. And that's our gopher there, and that's it down here what it looks like. Okay, so that's going to be it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you maybe learned something or were entertained. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.